Hello, Kristen here from Lily Row Gardens in Southeastern PA, Zone 6B. And today I wanted to just let you know, show you supplies of what I've come across and gathered for when we are going to do seed starting. Uh, in the next, probably in about two weeks, maybe a week, I'm going to really start in with sowing seeds indoors. And I have done this before, little science experiments with the kids, just hit or miss, trying it out. I've not had heat mats, no grow lights. I've just done the thing where I've even done tinfoil around the plants and stuck them in a very sunny window to, window to try to get them to grow. Never had any problem with germination uh, before, but again, I was just doing little little things and they ended up spindly. I never started them at the right time and they did grow, but not what I'm hoping to do this season. So I'm just going to go through what I have on the table here and show what I've already gotten and if I need to get more stuff, depending on how many I decide to seedlings I decide to start, we'll go from there. So I, these I purchased way back in the fall and I've already used them. They are from Gardener's Supply and I got these from recommendation from uh, Garden Answer YouTube channel. These, and they worked out good, I planted some cool flowers in them to plant, put out in the fall and they're 24 cell count trays. You have your tray that you put them in, then you have the bottom tray that goes underneath, comes with that, comes with the, the humidity dome on top. I, I can pull that out. But these were nice because they, they come with another insert that you, you set this wicking mat on. So the wicking mat goes on here and these sit on top. And the principle is if the soil will wick the uh, water up and keep your soil mo moist at all times, or for the most part, to help with that. To, to give you a little bit more control so your seedlings don't dry out. So those are Gardener Supply. I can't remember how much these were but they're, they're reusable, they're very, very good plastic. They're not the flimsy kind that like you're used to getting at the nursery where you just crumble them and they, that's not what these are. These are meant to be reused and they will last for, I anticipate, for years. So that I think was a good investment and a good thing to try. I might get end up getting more of them depending on how this year goes, but that's I have two of those. Then I also got random pots. I just picked these up at Lowe's. They were under three dollars. So the Jiffy seed starting pots, and you're supposed to be able to plant these right in the ground. I've done this before. I'll probably make sure that I pull the pot away from the roots when I do it. Anyway, these I got for my eucalyptus because I want to repot them in these to give them room to grow since they're going to be indoors for a while. And for any the tomatoes you can bump up to bigger pots as well. So that's what those are for. Then you, I would highly recommend a heat mat. And I never bought one before because I thought, oh, do I want to bother with that? Are they expensive? Whatever. I just got two of these off of Amazon for $22. I had already gotten one off of Amazon before for, I think it was 15 or less. But I just went on because I'm going to be starting quite a few seeds and I needed more than one. 
So I don't think $10 is too bad of an investment. Again, this will last for years. And then you're guaranteed warmth for your seeds. Our house is old. It's drafty, it's cold. We don't have radiators anymore, so I don't have any place to stick these uh, cell trays to warm the soil up to help them to germinate. And it's, I just wanted to guarantee, well, as much as I can to help them. And I've, I use these for my eucalyptus and my lindsayanthus that I've already started, and they all germinated well. Then I got these, and these are what I used to start the Lysianthus and Eucalyptus because I did not have a lot of those seeds. So these are only 12 pack. I got these off of Amazon and I really like them. Now the, the cell trays, I believe I'll be able to reuse these several times. They're not, again, as flimsy as what you buy your annuals in, in the gardeners. The, the gardener sub center, but they're not as uh, hefty as gardener these from gardener supply. But I think these were good enough. They were uh, how many were in there? Maybe I I don't I want to say a dozen. They came with the the bottom tray, the cell pack, the humidity dome, which you can adjust as well. They also came with a small garden marker and some plant tags and I think maybe some other random little tools that probably won't ever use but they were just a bonus and I think these were under ten dollars or right around there we will my husband will link everything below but they were not expensive and if you just want to try a few small things I would recommend these these would fit on my windowsill. And what I would do is if I didn't want to invest in, a, in grow lights or in have the fluorescent lights, which we'll talk about in a minute, I would just stick this in here. You use the humidity dome until they germinate, then you take it off. Then what I would do is I would do a cardboard type of setup with tin foil on three sides of this and stick it up against a window. I think that would be your best bet, bet to get as much light in there as possible. But these, I really do like these and I may order some more of them depending on if I need them. They're good if you only want a dozen of something and uh, then you're not, you're not investing in a full 70 count tray or 24 count tray. So we'll move, anyway, enough of that. Move on for those. And, the, and really, you go on Amazon, you can find all of this stuff, any of this stuff. Of course, this is pro proprietary to Gardner Supply. I don't think you could get that on Amazon, but I'm sure they have something similar to it and not very expensive. Now, these, this tray I got from Botanical Interest when I got my seeds from them. And... Again, I can't remember how much I paid for it. It wasn't terribly much. I think it came with a kit. But it's your seed tray. It's two, two just trays, not the cell packs, and then the humidity domes. And then I got these recycled, recycled, recycled paper pots. You don't recycle them. They, they're biodegradable in the garden. So I just thought I'd try these, and we'll do it that way with when we plant those up and then you can go to Lowe's you can go to Walmart they're all starting right now today is January 31st they're all st slowly starting to get all this stuff out and I um, I've seen these in tractor supply this one I picked up last fall I think I got it at Walmart after the season and it was half price or whatever this now this is the flimsy cell packs that I'm talking about. This, if I get another season out of these, I'll be surprised. But I may have paid only $3, $3 for it. It's a 72 cell pack. And I wanted to try different things to see what I liked best. So that is that. And um, the other thing I recommend, you're gonna need a, uh, some form of spray bottle to mist 
your seedlings on the top. And then these I also got, this is 200 count plastic plant markers I got off of Amazon. Again, $7 maybe. And this garden marker, which I really like. The other little garden marker that came with this set does not write as nicely as this one. And this was recommended from another YouTube channel, Garden Answer, I'm pretty sure. That's pretty much the one I watch. And I do really like this. I've been using this. It writes nicely on the tags. It writes clearly. It's not too bulky and thick. And it's supposed to last better than a Sharpie marker. So that's why this was $6.99 maybe. Then your, the tags. I did get wooden tags probably with the, I think with these initial ones. And I used them in the fall. But they got moldy and the the marker and I had used a Sharpie marker on those bled. So I, I'm not going to use the wooden ones. But these plant markers and I'll take one out for you. So that's what they look like. They're enough and I planned really I'm going to be diligent at labeling everything so hence the 200 pack. That's it for today. Oh grow lights. Now back in at the end of summer I did order a a, a uh, what name are you looking at? Uh, a shelving thing from Gardener's Supply. I, it was an investment. It was a, a gift from my hubby. And it came with official LED grow lights. But that was a couple hundred dollars. So unless you really want... But I wanted it for to eat, leave out year-round. It's right over there in my living room. I enjoy it. It's it's a, I consider it a furniture piece. For seed starting, I am just using a wire rack and we will show that to you. It's in my kitchen. We cannot do seed starting in the basement here. It's too cold. I can't do it out in the shed and I don't have any room. We have a living room and we have a kitchen in this house and a bathroom downstairs. And upstairs are bedrooms. So I have it set up right in the kitchen, a wire baker's rack that I had gotten at BJ's many years ago. It was out in my shed. I just requisitioned it for this. Then I had gotten at Lowe's, they came in a two pack. They were LED shop lights. And I did research this. I tried to, because official grow lights can be very pricey. And I wanted, enough to, this is my garden, garden helper, Sunny. I wanted enough to, I wanted at least four. So I got the shop lights. They were a two pack for under $30. I want to say they were 25, right around 25. There are 4,000 lumens for each shop light. They came with the chains which again I'm researching because I've heard with you're using LED you don't have to lower and raise so if anybody out there is watching this and can give me a specific answer on that do I need to lower my my lights if they are LED or can I leave them the same height throughout the whole growing of the seedlings anyway I have two shelves of this unit which is the wider one and the lights cover, I have two shop lights set up on each shelf. So I have four LED shop lights and the on the two shelves out there. I also got another LED, uh, this is an official grow light off of Amazon back in early fall. But I think again, I, I think I paid around 40 or 50 for dollars just for that one light. It's about this big and it comes on a it's on a stand that I can raise or lower so definitely I think shop lights are the best way to go I went to look for just the regular shop lights not the LED and I could not find them I think Lowe's that they had the the uh, the units but they didn't have the bulbs 
or vice versa. I can't, I can't even remember. I'm walking around and I was talking to the one of the employees there and he couldn't figure it out other than I think everybody's trying to, the, the government wants us to shift to LED, which is fine with me. A fluorescent bulbs, that's what I couldn't find. LED, if they're better for everything, fine. And they use le less electricity and they're supposed to be just as good as the fluorescent and the price point is not much more if you get them as shop lights. So we will do more in the near future with that and uh, start growing and I'm very excited to see what the garden produces this year. So have a great day. Thanks.